Happy Monday. How is everybody today? Near and far, you are continuously, and I, I sincerely tell you that you are continuously in our thoughts and in our prayers. We miss you. We miss you. But uh, God is good, and uh, he's got a reason and a purpose for everything. I mean, on the positive side, I, uh, I hope these chapel services are an encouragement, are a blessing, are insightful in helping you grow in your faith. It, is, it, it has helped me, I mean, basically with uh, the normal routine that we had before COVID, uh, we were not doing such an in-depth uh, Bible study. Yes, we were doing chapel services, but uh, now that all of us here are, are looking for ways that we can be an encouragement to you, uh, it has helped me. It has helped me per personally, uh, being deeper in the Word, studying it out, and uh, being able to communicate it to you. Mark will be sharing what God has put on his heart today, but before we do that, we're going to pray, and then we're going to listen to some recorded music. So let me lift you up in prayer, please. Precious Heavenly Father, we come before you this day, this day, every day, thanking you, Lord, for who you are, your constant reminder of love and mercy and grace. Lord, always seeking uh, your strength, always seeking encouragement. Lord, looking for ways that we can be a, a bright and shining light to a lost and dying world. Lord, through our difficulties, may we just uh, overflow in joy uh, and uh, let other people know that even though in difficulties, our God has this. We love you, Lord. We thank you for loving us first. In Jesus' name, amen. And now, our music to encourage you. Victory in Jesus. Well, I heard an old story how the Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. And I heard about his groaning of his precious blood so
Wow. We're all singing in here. <laughs> I, I do appreciate that song. I picked it for a reason. And uh, today we're going to be looking at when uh, Jacob finally passes. And uh, death is not an easy thing. However, uh, a lot of times it's said that families get together generally for weddings and funerals. And, uh, and, and I, I do love weddings, but the Bible has something... Uh, to say about that, that actually it's more blessed to go to a funeral. And it, it causes us to consider several things. It causes us to consider our own humanity, our, our frailty of life, and to consider how uh, life is a blessing and each day should be cherished. And if we want people to um, think of us well when we pass, that uh, a funeral is, is a time to celebrate. And so, but make each day count now, build those relationships, keep, uh, keep things so that uh, you don't have to think about if you're angry at anybody or if you're harboring bitterness, work those out, keep those lists short. And, uh, and, and like I said, live each day as a blessing from the Lord. And so today uh, we're going to be... Uh, looking at Genesis, the end of 49, and then a little bit in 50. I do want to say a shout out to Christina. I see that she's on, and, and uh, we've really enjoyed uh, chatting with her. Our other friend, Mercy from India, glad that y'all are doing well. And just pray that God's going to bless not just you, but all of our seafaring friends around the world and, uh, and bring encouragement today. Well, uh, let me give you just a little bit of background on the passage. So we have seen this family uh, go through a lot of different things. We've seen them go from uh, where Jacob leaves his father and mother and then goes to find a wife, ends up with four and uh, 12 sons and a daughter. And the family has done a lot of traveling. And they, um, they're pretty much uh, nomadic type people. And, uh, and then the dynamics of the family have been very interesting for us to look at as we have seen uh, brothers against brother. We've seen uh, all kinds of character development in their family. And we've seen God take Joseph through slavery, imprisonment, and make him to be the second in command of all Egypt and how God used him to be a savior of the world. Because if they hadn't have implemented the plan that God gave Pharaoh the dream about that the world would have perished from famine. And so God had used Joseph in a significant way. He prepared him through everything in his life. Joseph brings, ends up bringing his family, God brings the family to Egypt and that's kind of where we pick up where now Jacob is very old. And uh, I mean, he's very old. <laughs> and yesterday, Richard did a great job. Uh, the tradition would have been that before somebody died, they would give blessing to their family members. And so Jacob spoke basically prophecy over all of his sons and we can see how uh, many things were worked out through those prophecies, and it's amazing that he was able to speak in the, to, into their lives, that he was that not just coherent, but spiritually attuned to what the Lord would want their, his sons to know uh, right before he passed. And that's a wonderful blessing. And so as Jacob is nearing the end, we're going to look at what his final words were. So we're going to pick up in uh, Genesis chapter 49, verse 29. And this is from the New Living Translation. Then Jacob instructed them, Soon I will die and join my ancestors. Bury me with my father and grandfather in the cave in the field of Ephron the Hittite. This is the cave in the field of Machpelah near Machmerah in Canaan that Abraham bought from Ephron the Hittite as a permanent burial site. There Abraham and his wife Sarah are buried. There Isaac and his wife Rebekah are buried. And there I buried Leah. 
It is the plot of land and the cave that my grandfather Abraham bought from the Hittites. Then Jacob had finished, um, when Jacob had finished this uh, charge to his sons, he drew his feet into the bed, breathed his last, and joined his ancestors in death. Uh, I'm going to pause there. It is the end of the chapter, but um, what I find is really interesting is that there is an anchor in the land of Israel for God's people, the Jews. And uh, that anchor is is this spot, is kind of the a starting spot for them. Uh, Jacob could have been buried with honors in Egypt, but he didn't want that. He knew, God put it in his heart, that he had to be buried back in the land of Israel, that what would become Israel, that he didn't want people his people, the Jews, to think, hey, let's go to where Jacob's buried. Let's visit his body there. Let's pay him tribute. No, he want, he was he knew that his body couldn't stay in Israel, and so he t asked them to make a funeral procession all the way back to this cave. And, and then, uh, you know, it's amazing that he has said a lot up to this point. And what a blessing it is that he is, has all of his faculties up until his last breath. And I have to think of my mother-in-law, that uh, she was given the same blessing uh, at the end of her life. She was uh, very healthy up till the end, and then she, uh, they thought she had a stroke. But apparently it was just a problem with her aorta valve. And they said, you've got a few days to live. And she didn't have a pity party. She took advantage. She started calling people and saying goodbye. The people in the hospital were kind of like, who is this lady? And after a while, they kind of thought maybe she's not going to die because because uh, she was so optimistic. So many people from her church were coming and visiting and they're, you know, they're praying with her, but it's not, oh, you know, you know, let's see if we can reverse this. She was ready to go meet Jesus. And it was an awesome testimony up to the end. And I, I don't know, I'd never heard of such a thing, uh, really. Uh, but God gave that blessing for our family so that everybody could come and say goodbye. Obviously, in Jacob's situation, everybody's surrounding him, and he has a chance to say goodbye to everybody. And it's, it's just a, a wonderful thing if that should happen. And uh, I pray that if, uh, anyway, I, I just pray that, uh, that when death comes, it'll be, uh, it'll be all right. And uh, I did read in a commentary some funny things that uh, one guy asked another, hey, in your city, what's the death rate? And he said, one for one. <laughs> Everybody's going to die. And, uh, and then uh, apparently the comedian Woody Allen, when he was asked about death, he said, I'm not afraid to die. I just don't want to be there when it happens. <laughs> so, uh, so, you know, death is kind of something that is inevitable for all of us. And uh, we don't know how we're going to die or when we're going to die. And, and uh, I want to skip over to another scripture really quick. Um, and that is that we all have an appointment with death. And it says in Hebrews 9.27 from the King James Version, and it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. And, and so if we have an appointment with death, it means that God already knows when that is. He knows exactly what's going to happen. And I want to just be able to rest in that. I don't want to have to worry about it. I don't want to have to think how uh, or be afraid of it. Um, it. It's one of those things that is natural. Uh, it's part of life. And I think the more important thing that God wants us to be concerned with is living well and enjoying each day for what it is and to find him each day. And when we do that, we're going to have an amazing life. And so anyway, that's my little commercial there. Uh, but oh, one last thing I want to mention is that uh, Jacob set things up ahead of time. 
and I don't I don't have all the plans for or Jamie and I haven't we have a will and we we have some uh, some direction but we haven't made a lot of decisions yet but it makes it so much easier on those that you leave behind if you can go ahead and make those determinations beforehand because people can guess after we're gone about what our wishes would have been but it's so much easier on them if we can just go ahead and make decisions about end of life things for example um if you don't want a whole bunch of measures to be taken to keep your body alive when there's no chance for your, your for recovery then take let people off the hook and go ahead and 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 do uh, uh all the paperwork that's required so that that isn't a burden for somebody to carry for their life uh, if that's your desire. And then, you know, every everything we can pre-plan makes it easier for them. So just just a, a little reminder or uh, not, uh, anyway, just hopefully a, a friendly tip. But um, with, with this story, let's pick up in chapter 50 in verse one, and uh, it says, Joseph threw himself on his father and wept over him and kissed him. Then Joseph told the physicians who served him to embalm his body, uh, his father's body, so Jacob was embalmed. The embalming process took the usual 40 days, and the Egyptians mourned his death for 70 days. When the period of mourning was over, Joseph approached Pharaoh's advisors and said, Please do this favor and speak to Pharaoh on my behalf. Tell him that my father made me swear an oath. He said to me, listen, I am about to die. Take my body back to the land of Canaan and bury me in the tomb I prepared for myself. So please allow me to go and bury my father. After his burial, I will return without delay. Pharaoh agreed to Joseph's request. Go and bury your father. He made you a promise, he said. So Joseph went up to bury his father. He was accompanied by all of Pharaoh's officials, all of the senior members of Pharaoh's household and all the senior officers of Egypt. Joseph also took his entire household and his brothers and their households, but he left the little children and flocks and herds in the land of Goshen. A great number of chariots and charioteers accompanied Joseph. When they arrived at the fleshing floor of Atad near the Jordan River, they held a, a very great and solemn memorial service with a seven-day period of mourning for Joseph's father. The local residents, the Canaanites, watched them mourning at the threshing floor of Atad. Then they renamed that place, which is near the Jordan, Abel Mizraim, for they said, This is a place of deep mourning for these Egyptians. So Jacob's sons did as he commanded them. They carried his body to the land of Canaan and buried him in the cave in the field of Machpelah near Mamre. This is the cave that Abraham had bought as a permanent burial site from Ephraim the Hittite. Oops, sorry about that. So we have... Uh, we have things being taken care of. And let me just go back and touch on a couple of things. So uh, Joseph had to have known that his father was gonna pass. And he obviously loved his father. He, he wept over him. Uh, and I just wanna encourage you that uh, grief is not a bad thing, that there are certain emotions that have to be let out. And if we repress them, if we stuff them, it's very unhealthy. Uh, if you look at the New Testament, uh, Jesus uh, talked about how, um, oh, just lost my train of thought. Anyway, uh, Jesus was going to heal uh, Jairus's daughter. And there are professional whalers there that are already, after she passed, they're already carrying on and doing what they're supposed to do. And Jesus tells them, hey, that's enough of that. Uh, the child's not dead, just sleeping. And so they have to back off. Oh, they start laughing at him. But, um, but I mean, it was obvious in the Jewish culture that they understood that grief is something that has to be worked through. And so don't ever feel bad about mourning the loss of a loved one. 
uh, and don't feel like you have to be tough for others. Uh, sometimes uh, some people will be so tough that people wonder, did they really love them? And the more we know somebody that at the deeper level, then the more processing we have to do. Now, there is an unhealthy form of grief that, uh, you know, healing takes place over time. But if we, it could be like a scab, if we keep picking at it, it's never going to heal. And so uh, I would encourage you that if, if you really find yourself in, in a dark place after a long time, that you may need some counseling and to talk it out. You may need to talk to a friend. And, and I believe that just like it says in, in 1 Corinthians, that, uh, that we go through things so we can minister to others. And so we need to be ministering to others in this area. So um, anyway, that's my encouragement there. Um, but th it was a big deal that they made. Joseph uh, had to ask Pharaoh for permission. It seems kind of odd that the number two guy would have to, in Egypt, would have to send people to talk to Pharaoh for him. But because he had been around a dead body, the thought is that he would be considered uh, unclean to go before the king. And so he did that via these advisors. And obviously Pharaoh didn't want to stop anything from happening. And so he allowed it to happen. The other thing I, I, I thought I'd mention is that it says that he used physicians to embalm his father rather than the normal uh, people that would do the embalming process. And it's thought he didn't want them to do the religious practices of the Egyptians on his father. So he, he just asked the physicians to do it. So, um, so we see that uh, a lot of things happen. Uh, they spend a whole week once they get there and they have this threshing floor, which is just a big open area where they could be more comfortable because there would be more of a breeze there. Uh, it would be a place where they could, um, they could all be together and be more comfortable. So uh, the no local people noticed it and uh, it made an impression on them. Now, one of the reasons why I picked victory in Jesus is because uh, that is the ultimate thing for believers. And if we put our hope in Jesus, then a funeral can be as much of a celebration because that person is with Christ as it is a, a time of, of mourning their loss. And I love the idea of celebration services and celebrating a life lived for Christ. And believe me, one of the things that I hope for as a believer is that I will finish the race well so that people don't go, yeah, he had a pretty good life, most of it, but then kind of trip there at the end. I don't want that. I, I want to finish the race strong and for people to not celebrate what I did, but what Christ did through me. And the fact that um, perhaps there was a time when I struggled with different things in my life, but in general, people saw Christ in my life. And, and that, uh, that's something that makes me excited about, uh, about going to a funeral is when you know that the person was a believer. This past Saturday, uh, we went to the funeral of Carolyn's mother, and uh, and it was a beautiful thing to hear uh, the gospel presented and how much she loved the Lord and and lived for Christ, and just to know that family could could rally around that, um, even though she is passed, I, I have to think about a verse that yeah here it is that Jesus shares some insight into things. And, uh, and it says this, this is in Matthew 22, and just a little bit of background. The Sadducees wanted to trip Jesus up, and so they asked him a question about, it's a very complicated question about the resurrection and whether somebody would be married to a woman and all, but Jesus replied in verse 29, your mistake is that you don't know the scriptures and you don't know the power of God for when the dead rise, they will neither marry or be given in marriage. To this respect, they will be like the angels in heaven. But now, as to whether there will be a resurrection of the dead, haven't you ever read this in the scriptures? Long after Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had died, God said, 
I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. So he is the God of the living, not the dead. And uh, I just, I have to believe that uh, from Jesus' own words, we know that death is not final. We know that, uh, that they are in God's presence. And that's an awesome hope. So here's the thing. The Bible is a promise book. And the promises that relate to heaven are, are awesome. Because the, the beautiful thing is, is that it isn't based on how good of a life you live. It's not good based on how much money you give to the poor. It is based solely on if you trusted in Christ before you died and, and believed in him. If he is your way of salvation, then you can be with him for eternity in heaven. And that is an awesome promise. And today I, I'm focused a lot on, on uh, Jacob's passing and on death in general, but uh, the the beautiful part is that that's good news that we don't have to be uh, worried that when that judgment comes after this life's over, that if we have trusted in Christ, we have Christ's righteousness in us. And God doesn't see our sin. He sees Christ in us and on us. And that's, a, that's an awesome thing. So I just want to encourage you today that you can know God personally. You can know his love today until you die and then for eternity on. And so please consider that. If you, uh, if you are moved to want to take a step towards um, following him for the rest of your life, to turning your life over to him, then you could pray a prayer like this. Uh, Father, I just want to um, ask your forgiveness for the things that I've done wrong. I want to I ask your forgiveness for trusting in my own good works, for trusting in anything else other than Jesus. I thank you that you sent your one and only son to die on the cross for me and that he didn't stay dead, but he rose from the grave so we could have hope for eternity. And we thank you for that. And I just uh, thank you for loving me, for forgiving me and for giving me purpose in life. I give my life to you today in Jesus name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer today for the first time, we would love to know. Uh, if you could, um, if you could contact us with Messenger or some other way, or you can send an email to info at cpm.life. We would love to continue the journey with you. If you are struggling in some way and you need uh, prayer or you need help, please reach out to us. Uh, if we aren't there for you now, then then uh, then we aren't doing what we're supposed to do. And so, uh, as much as we can, we want we'll definitely pray for you and do whatever we can to help you. Uh, we uh, ask God's blessing on you often as we pray together. And uh, so, thank you for joining in. God bless you, and have a wonderful rest of your day or or, or evening. God bless you. Oops. <laughs>